In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear Christians, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Christians, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in the hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Maker and Redeemer, you have made us a new company of priests to bear witness to the gospel. Enable us to be faithful to our calling to make known your promises to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is from Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, verses 5 to 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Get here. Now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in Psalm 89. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. 
For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones and awesome above all who are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth is also yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. Our second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passion. Do not present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity, and to lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now you present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit that you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. On this fourth Sunday after the Pentecost, the word comes to us from St. Matthew's Gospel, the 10th chapter, verses 40 to 42, breaking the silence with the word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When my folks decided to go back to church when I was a young teenager, after having been away for a long time, I confess that I was less than enthusiastic about going back to church. I suspect we've all been very enthusiastic this morning to come back to church. But for a 15-year-old boy back then, I wasn't jazzed up about it. I didn't care much for the hymn singing. I think I've told you that before. But as we started to go regularly, I was captivated by the message, by the word that I was hearing in that place. I was so enthralled by that word that I thought that our Lord Christ would come walking down that center aisle of that small church in New Holland 
right then and there. And I remember just looking back over my shoulder. Is he coming yet? Is he here? As our Lord Christ describes it in our gospel lesson this morning, he did just that in that small church. He was indeed present. His word was heard. The preacher in that small church gave to me what he had received, the gospel of Jesus Christ, this gospel, this good news of Jesus is is the power of salvation for all, even for cranky, miserable 15-year-old boys who just want to get out of New Holland. Did the preacher at that small church in New Holland sometimes get lost in the weeds when he was preaching? Yeah. Did he sometimes have bad Sundays? Yeah, he did. Did he sometimes not say things the best way. Of course, he was human. All of that happened. But you know what? The Holy Spirit used the voice of that preacher in that small church to bring Jesus to those people and to that community and even to me. That's life with a gospel preacher. Now life without a preacher, is to live with a silent, distant, fearful God. The prophet Isaiah once remarked, truly you are a God who hides himself. And that's frightening to us. Because it means that we can't climb up the ladder to heaven. We can't go there and knock on the door to tell God to make himself known to us. In fact, there is no ladder. There is no knocking on the door of heaven to rouse God to answer us, no matter how much we want that. So if we can't do that, then how does God make himself known to us? How does he reveal himself to us in the here and now? And our Lord Christ tells us this morning in this gospel lesson, Whoever receives you, he says to his preachers as he's sending them out, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. He sends a preacher your way. That's how God reveals himself to you. At the beginning of that 10th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, known as the missionary discourse, because he's preparing his preachers to send them out, our Lord Christ called his 12 apostles together, And he gave them authority. He deputized them. He then instructed them on what to say, what to preach. Why? Because this is how God makes his will known to us. This is how God reveals himself to us. He sends a sinner bearing God's word to other sinners. And what does that preacher do when he arrives? Is he there to tell you sentimental stories? Does he expound upon the latest political situation in the world? Does he share his opinions or his newfangled thoughts and ideas about this and that? Does he act as a schoolmaster, grading everyone on their levels of righteousness? No. That's not why God sends preachers out into the world. Our Lord Christ gives the preacher what to say. He says, proclaim as you go. Proclaim the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, preach the gospel. The good news that declares unconditionally and fully that sins are forgiven on account of Jesus Christ. That death has been knocked over and flattened down and defeated forever in Jesus' resurrection. This is how God breaks the silence of this world. By sending preachers bearing his word, his gospel, his good news. And by sending a preacher out, our Lord Christ is heard. So when a preacher says, just as I said at the beginning of this service, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, You're hearing the voice of a 47-year-old sinner. 
But in that moment, those words spoken by that sinner are the very words of our Lord Christ. His promise that declares holy absolution over you. That breaks the silence with the mercy of God's forgiveness in Jesus. And the same is true for the sacrament of the altar. When Jesus says, this is my body given for you, this is my blood shed for you and for your forgiveness of your sins. Yes, indeed, it's me standing there at the altar. But those are the promises of our Lord Jesus given to you in the here and now. And this is what our Lord Christ sends preachers out to deliver. To not have this, to not have those promises in your ears is to be surrounded by the constant snares of death. Life without a gospel preacher is to know only the finality of sin and death. It is to know only ultimately a silent and hidden God. The silence and hiddenness is shattered by a God who sends a preacher your way bearing a word that says in the midst of certain death, life in Christ is yours forever. In this gospel delivered by a preacher into one's ears, there is freedom to be had. Freedom. Freedom from trying to justify oneself to the world. Freedom from not having to be afraid of judgment and death anymore. Instead, in their place, one is given hope. A sure and certain hope rooted in Jesus Christ, who still speaks in his holy church to this day and declares that you are loved and that you are forgiven. This word of grace given from the mouth of another sinner from outside of ourselves means that we are no longer trapped in the bondage of sin and death. That we are no longer trapped in our worries and our fears and our failures. Instead, this word given by the gospel preacher tells us, thankfully, that our lives are hidden in Christ. That in baptism, our old selves died. And we were raised, raised anew to be his new creation, to walk with Christ, to go where he leads, to do as he would have us to do. Without a preacher, without the gospel, we are left to ourselves and our bellies, and we hurt others. And we continue in the sin-filled pattern of this world. With the preacher bearing the word, with the preacher bearing the gospel, there is faith, there is hope, and there is love. There is Jesus walking down the center aisle among his people, keeping his promises to be with us always to the end of the age. Thanks be to God for that. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near to the Lord's throne of grace and pray as he commanded us, trusting in the Lord to hear the prayers of his people and answer our petitions according to his mercy. O most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray you so to rule and govern your church and all her pastors and ministers that she may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, defended against all adversity, and protected from all adversaries, that thereby faith may be strengthened and love increased in us. Grant health, wisdom, and integrity to all in authority over us, especially the president and the governor, the Congress and all legislative bodies, judges and magistrates, Endow them with your spirit and with respect for your word, that they would serve your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the punishment of wickedness, so that we all may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Grant to those in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, the healthful spirit of your grace 
for healing, strength, comfort, and relief. Bless those who suffer for the sake of your name and your word. Hear us on behalf of those who have asked for our prayers this morning. Brooke, Connie, Eric, Cindy, Jerry, Shirley, Leon, Laverne, Joyce, Denise, and all those we name in our hearts. Give them courage to stand firm in their afflictions and patience until the day of your deliverance. Preserve us from pestilence and every evil. Give to us favorable weather and cause the fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season and offer you praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness to us. All these things for which you would have us ask of you, we pray you to grant to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we are bold to call you Father, and whose name we pray, trusting in your mercy and confident that you will answer our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear Christians, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Our service continues with the offertory prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup 
gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are ready. Come for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 blood of Christ shed 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 for you. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Receive now the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Dear Christians, let us go forth in the holy name of Christ. Thanks be to God.